Not a matter of if, but when a crisis could rock your world. I'm Rashini Rajkumar, crisis strategist, licensed attorney, and host of The Crisis Files. In each case file, we explore a real-world crisis or multidimensional controversy. My crisis squad and I are here to find solutions. We also bring in practitioner experts who are solving crises from the inside. If cybercrime were a country, it would be the third largest behind the United States and China. Today, Shailen Johnson is here to break down the numbers and not make us too scared about how many trillions this crisis is causing the world. Get ready for the case file I call Cyber Risky. Shailen is Vice President and Senior Risk Consultant at Marsh McLennan Agency. Latest estimates show that cybercrime is costing us $16.4 billion a day. Hard to wrap your brain around these numbers. It's crazy, Rashini. I think it's almost too big for some people to digest. It's kind of depressing, Shailen. It is. On the front page of every other week's newspaper is some sort of cyber breach. Businesses think, well, that's not going to happen to me. I'm not a retail store. I'm not Target. I'm not Home Depot. Right. I'm not taking credit card information. And for me, as a business insurance and risk consultant, I'm talking to my clients on how to manage risk. Now, cyber risk has been around since 1997, and the insurance mechanisms have been around that long as well. My job is to talk to clients and help them manage your balance sheets and financial statements and talk about all the things that could impact your business. And I would talk to them about, hey, have you looked at cyber insurance? And they'd give me the stiff arm back. They'd say, we're not a retail store. We don't need that. We don't need that. Then you start talking about, well, what are some of the exposures you're getting on a daily basis? We start talking about social engineering. And that's when emails are bogus or or false. They appear to make up somebody that's in the company. Kind of like a fake identity. But let's get into some of the terms first. So you hear these terms like ransomware and the dark web. What do they mean? Well, so the dark web is thousands of times bigger than the real internet that we're familiar with, right? Who knew? Who knew? Well, you did, but wow. In my research, right? So the other component that businesses don't realize is that what happens if they were to be breached? There's so many legal ramifications. I'll be talking to a manufacturer and he says, well, we're a manufacturer. What do we have to worry about? Well, do you have any client's blueprints? Do you have any other designs, their future patents available that you're looking at? Do you have your client's personal information, their their business information? Clients and even employees. Employees. What happens if you got breached? And they kind of give you the deer in the headlights, stare back. Well, there's a number of things. First off, it's your third-party liability. Because you got breached, you got a responsibility to notify everybody and their kid's sister that you do business with that you got breached. And what does that look like, right? That's expensive. Very it's embarrassing. Ex- How do you tell everybody that, hey, I got breached. This is truly a crisis. And I think people don't fully understand how big this is and how much it's growing. Because I think about AI now, artificial intelligence growing and all that, what is happening. So all these technological advances also open up more cyber risk. In 2021, cybercrime was estimated to cost organizations six trillion U.S. dollars. We said 16.4 billion a day. That's 500 billion a month, 115 billion dollars a week. They're real, real numbers. Money. So bad actors sell personal data to the black web. What's a bad outcome then after that, Shailen? So they're taking this personal information and they're selling it through the dark web. And the dark web is all these bad actors, right? So you're talking about these cyber criminals that are profiting selling that information. Minneapolis schools. Right. In Minneapolis, they had a major breach, which was a PR nightmare for them. And ramifications are going to go on for years. Right. This is happening all over the United States, all over the world. So when you describe this crisis, I always say, we can fight this. We can fight this. But some may say, this just seems unbeatable. So how do we get the protections going? There's an industry that's growing daily, and that's the cybersecurity or cyber resiliency industry, experts that are there to help clients protect themselves in their valuable information that they're having in their servers, their customers' information. That industry currently is at $150 billion. 
Wow. And growing. Now, are these mostly helping businesses, or what about just your neighbors, our community association, the PTA, whatever? All, all the above. You'll have your own personal cyber protection services, but most of this is on the business side. Organizations, your IT consultants that will come in and provide that firewall and making sure that whoever's in that organization is aware of cyber and, and putting together tools and resources. But the biggest challenge I see is they think it's the end-all, be-all. Well, I got an IT guy. I got an IT consultant that they manage our firewall. They see to it that no bad actors get in. That's kind of a false... False op- sense of security, false really. False sense of security. And the biggest component there is this cyber crime is growing. The cyber criminals profit over $1.5 trillion. That's with a T, a year. Whereas the cyber industry is only $150 billion. So they're all spending us 10 to 1. The biggest thing that I want to push for people is that nobody's immune. I've got clients that are social service organizations, nonprofits. They're doing great work, and they're getting hacked. And one hack for many organizations, especially some nonprofits, could just completely ruin them and bring them under. And all that great work that's being done that they do just goes away because they were hacked. So it sounds like, first and foremost, businesses want to protect themselves, their infrastructure, their employees. Employees need to demand from employers too, right? Yes. And also learn how do we protect ourselves on the job. Biggest thing is you're only as strong as your weakest link, right? In fact, 95% of all cyber hacks can be attributed to human error. So it's that training. Everybody that's in your organization has to be aware of cyber and the ramifications of it. You know, um, only one out of seven cyber incidents get reported. Wow. So is that because they're embarrassed? Embarrassed. Or maybe don't even know. Most of the time, they're not even aware. And what's really scary is these cyber criminals are sitting inside your servers, your computer systems, on average six months. So they're looking at emails. They're figuring out who's got the checkbook. They're looking at specific dates. And we were always talking about the need for cyber insurance. And it's like, all right. Reluctantly, they sign up for it, right? They're like, oh, okay, whatever, Shaylin. (laughs) <laughs> and fast forward, the controller gives me a call on their way to, oh, he's going for spring break. They're going to go to the airport with his family. So Rob, the president, bogus Rob, sends Dan an email, say, Dan, hey, uh, sorry I wasn't able to see you off before you left for vacation. I needed to go to another meeting. Hey, do this, this, and oh, by the way, we're going to buy that equipment that we've been looking at for X number of months. And then I need you to wire $50,000 to that, this location. And oh, by the way, Dan, don't worry about the accounting. We'll figure that out when when it's done. The email looks completely legit. It it referenced Dan's family. The vacation. uh, The vacation. Referenced kids' names. Dan, fortunately, gave Rob a call before he got to the airport. Hey, Rob, I I did this, this. And oh, by the way, I wired that $50,000 wire payment. And Rob's like, you did what? Right? And so those are the type of scenarios that come up. And so Dan gives me a call. Hey, Shailen, we got... Tell me we have cyber insurance, right? <laughs> and I says, well, first off, call your bank. And sure enough, it was happened before 4 o'clock, and I think the bank had a 4 o'clock. This is when we start wiring money, right? So that was a big thing. But the other component now I see is we've talked about social engineering, right, these bogus emails. And for the longest time, it was a joke. Oh, yeah, I get emails all the time from Jim, the controller, and we, we kind of laugh them off. Then with Zygalon goes, well, now here's what's happening. That bogus email from the CFO is going out to all your clients. That bogus email from your owner, the CEO, is going out to everybody. I have another scenario in which a client of mine sells heavy machinery, right? So they call up their customer and say, hey, you know, it's been 90 days. Hope you're enjoying the equipment we sold you. When are we going to get payment? And he goes, well, what do you mean? We sent separate payments over a couple hundred thousand. We sent it to that wire you sent us. And here what happened was the bad actors commandeered the sales rep's email to the customer saying, hey, thanks for your business. Here's your warranty information. Oh, and by the way, here's where you send your wire payment. Yeah, these are nightmares. And what you describe aren't some big complicated communication. It's because those cyber criminals were in there learning, learning, just waiting for the moment, to send that email that's going to get you to do something that's economically bad for you. So most cyber attacks are just phishing, just throwing these bogus emails out, and somebody's clicking on it. 
it's a salesman thinking that it's a purchase order. It's not a purchase order. But these cyber criminals, they know what's going on. They're looking at your calendar. They know vacation times, but they'll also know when's the worst time they can get that person. And the other component that I want companies to realize is that a good offense is a good defense. You need to not only have a good IT person, you need to educate your staff, your employees. You need to understand how significant this could be for your businesses. In fact, most small businesses that get breached or hacked, they go out of business. They can't survive. No, it's just astronomically right. expensive. Right. Well, you've scared me, uh, and I'm sure many of our <laughs> listeners. But thank you, Shailen Johnson. You can find Shailen on LinkedIn or at his business's site, marshmma.com. And I know they have a lot of other great information out there to help you prevent crisis and avoid risk in your own life. Today's Crisis Brief is sponsored by Minneapolis Regional Chamber. Number one, make cyber resiliency part of operations. 95% of all cyber claims can be traced back to human error. You're only as strong as your weakest link. Number two, discuss best practices at your business and your home. Make sure employees and family members are all on the same page. Number three, a good offense is a good defense. Look into cyber liability insurance. It may save you headaches, money, and reputation loss. And even with insurance, constant vigilance is needed. The Minneapolis Regional Chamber is a proud sponsor of the Crisis Files podcast. The Minneapolis Regional Chamber is the area's most active business advocacy organization, playing a critical role in top issues impacting the region, including workforce development, education, housing, and transportation. Make your voice heard by becoming a member of the Minneapolis Regional Chamber. Learn more at mplschamber.com or Google Minneapolis Regional Chamber. Catch up on all the case files at thecrisisfiles.com for the show archive plus special videos. Subscribe to our YouTube page on thecrisisfiles.com. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at The Crisis Files. Please rate and review The Crisis Files on your platform of choice so others can listen for crisis prevention information. We do not provide legal, financial, medical, or PR advice for particular situations, but strongly recommend you seek professionals to help with your specific need. I'm Rashini Rajkumar. Join me next time on The Crisis Files.